done with sports talk worldwide with some news from the world of boxing. So y'all know what time it is. You ain't in a rush to get concussed. Now, a little heavyweight news. I thought it was something pretty uh, pertinent. Our heavyweight champion Tyson Fury, you know, seen an article saying his dad vowed never to speak to him again if he fought Deontay Wilder. And that was back when he was coming off the couch and had his two uh, easy fights and he was supposed to go in here with Deontay Wilder. He was having problems with his father. His father didn't want to talk to him again. He thought he shouldn't be messing with Deontay Wilder because it's the highest level and you can get hurt in there, right? And Tyson Fury's arguing with him. Man, look, Anthony Joshua won't fight him. They're going back and forth. Somebody got to stand up and fight him. If I lose, I'm a fighting man and I lose, right? Good conversation going back and forth. I'll put the article in there. I was going to read it, but you don't really need to read it, right? Uh, I'll put the article in the description box. thought that was very important because, see, you know, a lot of times, People will try to act as if Deontay Wilder is, is not good, right? And that's really hard to do. You, something's wrong with you when you see people, you know, on the on the ground, knocked out, no matter how big or small, constantly from this guy. And, um, you know, they would steal. And you saw Anthony Joshua's reluctance to fight this guy. Now Anthony Joshua's out here talking about Tyson Fury like he really want to fight him. I've done videos about it. He really want to fight Tyson Fury. He done told him he's going to knock him out in six rounds. This is a guy that's confident. You never heard that with Deontay Wilder, right? He didn't. He understands that, you know, there's flat line possibilities in there. Now, you know, most of us right now, we don't want to do video about nothing. You know, right now, it's too much going on with, with your boy Jacob Blake um, um, for his family. Condolences going out. Uh, and we're sick of giving out condolences to families every second thir or third day. And then we're not hearing anything from police departments or police unions or something denouncing this behavior. It's a genocide going on, and the only reason there's not a civil war is because blacks are not shooting people on sight, okay? Because that's what's going about to come to. And they sick of this, uh, uh, people that won't even say sorry for it. And you know, when people walking around talking about Black Lives Matter, you know, focus for a time. And if you say all lives matter, you're racist, or you're an idiot. Right now, focus. And I've told you over the years, you replace these videos with blacks, what happened to be shooting, shot in the back when they, uh, with a taser or have nothing in their hand and they're running the opposite direction. We've been saying that. If you replace them with dogs, then everybody will be on the street saying dogs' lives matter. But when it comes to blacks, there's no empathy there because this is the same country that wants to protect com Confederate flags, saying, hey, we were what Confederate flag? This is our tradition, our heritage, right? Which means we want slaves. OK, what are we talking about? That's exactly what we're talking about. We used to at Trump rallies with T-shirts on saying we'd rather be Russians than Democrats. What is that telling you? That's straight in your face. Half of America is that racist and it's the white dudes. It ain't nothing else. Let's stop acting like we have a racial problem. It's one race that acts a fool all of the time. You can watch this video of Jacob uh, Blake being shot like that and will not have any empathy. Will still come back, and you can go to a, a, a station that would be illegal in any other country. But here, it's it's like Fox News exists, and they'll go on there talking about the guy shouldn't have walked away. That's what they'll do. Then you get a 17 year old vigilante walking in the street with with a, a assault weapon, right? Kid killing people, right? Killing people, and he's celebrated, right? Walking to Michigan, all these damn racists with Nazis and, and Nazis. Uh, symbols, swastikas, and and whatever else, Confederate flags, washing, uh, marching on on um, Michigan like that, right? Nothing happened. Screaming at police. Have you seen the armed black people people scream at police before? They're not unarmed. This is the difference. You know, well, white people are getting shot too. No, not unarmed. You know, if you were in a shootout, you just robbed a bank, and you were in a shootout, and you shooting at the police, and you got shot. That's different than somebody who is unarmed. Right. And yes, black people are a little bit apprehensive about letting a white police officer put handcuffs on. them. Because once you do that, you act up every time when he's helpless. Right. You run up on, on, on two or three Nazis. You don't have a problem. You run up on 10. You have a problem. One Nazi, one brother. Ain't nothing going to happen there ever when they're both unarmed. It's always a numbers thing or your hands behind your back. Now we can do stuff. You, you got prominent people who will have to tell their kids uh, the birds and the bees early. And you ain't bird, birds and the bees. Look, you can get shot when the police come. Please don't move at all. Right? What kind of stuff is that? Right? It is genocide. And all 
people are asking for is, is change. In terms of, if you're a white person, you shouldn't be able to be a police officer anymore. Without a whole bunch of security checks, you should have it extra hard. Especially if you haven't, if you're living in an area, some rural area where you haven't had anything to do with other races, right? There has to be a desensitized uh, months, right? Where you have to inter integrate and interact with other races because you're not capable. Somebody keeps trying to act and tell these people that blacks are so dangerous and, and all 71% of the hate crimes are coming from whites. People shooting people of other colors is always whites. Blacks don't shoot nobody but blacks. Okay, this is absolutely ridiculous, and it has to be changed now. Now, I'm talking about Tyson Fury and Joshua and Deontay Wilder, and then got off topic. But that's the bottom line. That's what's weighing heavy on our heart. And when we're sitting here and we're de uh, defending uh, Deontay Wilder as a heavyweight champion of the world who's knocked out 40 people in a row, damn it, that's what's up, right? And it's because of this stuff, because he's not famous enough. Andy Joshua was in a country where, you know, hey, we're nationalism first. We racist too over there. I'm trying to get it twisted. And England racist too. But it's not as extreme, right? But, it, you know, if you're going to throw bananas on the pitch at one of your own players in England, right, you know, then, you know, the racism is there. It's everywhere. Blacks have problems everywhere, right? It's a genital issue. I'll be honest with you. It's a genital issue. What do you think it is? What do you think this is? Every white person you know talk about BBC all the time, don't they? Okay, that, that's in, in their loins, in the subconscious, and that's what's going on here. But the bottom line is, yeah, we're behind Deontay Wilder and because we know what time it is. And I'm loving Deontay Wilder's silence because what the hell do you need to talk to any of these people for who would sit there, they can watch you, a black person get shot seven times or shot a couple of times running the opposite way with just a taser, right? And, and, and just ridiculous things. People making rap songs with every black person that's been uh, killed recently in the last five or 10 years and they could rap song could go six minutes with about 150 to 300 names. Ridiculous, right? That's what's going on. It ain't no more time to be turning away and I'm old. Oh, Deontay was supposed to come back and go on ESPN and Fox and talk to them same people who wouldn't even cover the story. The hell out of here. Never. That's why we love him. Because I ain't talking to y'all. Probably ever. Just like I said. So yeah, he's dangerous. Tyson Fury knew he was dangerous. That's why whatever went down with him and Tyson Fury went down because Tyson Fury and his daddy, who wasn't going to talk to him just for fighting Deontay Wilder, understands the man is dangerous, right? Extremely dangerous. He called it the highest uh, level. I should read that article, but I'm not. It's going to be in the description box. I probably was all over the place on this one, but the bottom line is this was Deontay Wilder being dangerous, and Tyson Fury and his daddy knew that, and they still do. That's why that stuff happened in those two fights, but we'll get to that when the time comes. Doma Sports Talk Worldwide. And I'm about to hear y'all.